Hello everybody, this is TJ Houston from tjhouston.com. Uh, recently Apple launched a pretty cool tool. It's called the Apple Configurator. So I wanted to do a quick walkthrough and kind of do the initial setup and kind of do step by step and explain a few things on how it works. Um, right now, to my knowledge, it is a Mac only tool and you get it by going to the App Store on your computer and type in Apple Configurator and you can see where it all automatically type it in for you. So when we look at the Apple Configurator, you can go through and read the description. It allows us to do 30 devices at a time, which is awesome for us in education. Um, right now we've been limited to um, some bubble gum and duct tape ways to try to manage these devices in the classroom. Um, and from an IT perspective, it's just not fun. Um, so the Apple Configurator, what it allows you to do, it allows you to install apps, uh, make sure the iPads stay updated, it allows you to put settings on there. So let's say you don't want your students to be able to look up um, plus 17 content in the App Store or you want to add VPN settings to the superintendent's iPad, but you don't really, you don't want to have to walk him through that, nor should he have to be, you know, walk through it himself. You can do this on your own. So click, you'll have an install link, so install that. And I'll go ahead and open it up here. Excuse me, I'm still fighting off a cold. So when we get to this page, you'll see a little prepare button on the bottom. After the first time it launches, it doesn't show up, but click on prepare and this is what you're going to see. Um, here we can give our device a name. So this will be my personal iPad. So new iPad, I'm going to call it an iPad 3. Um, turn on supervision. And what this does, it allows us to keep the latest version of the iOS, so if a new version comes out, it'll allow you to update. Uh, you can restore it from a backup. If you already have a backup of your iPads in your room, um, you can back it up so that way you're starting with what you already have, or you can just start fresh. Um, and then there's this section here called Profiles. So the way profiles work are they're basically just a list of settings that your iPad pulls from and reads from. So right now there's no profiles, so we'll go ahead and add one and we'll hit create a new profile. If you've already created a profile in something like the iPhone configuration utility or a third party utility, you could just import that profile here. If not, click create new profile. Here we can go through step by step, what do we want to do? Um, do we want to put a passcode on the device? Do we want to set um, certain restrictions on the device? So you can kind of see through here, um, allow automatic sync, allowed iCloud backup. Maybe you don't want your students to back up to iCloud, which if you only have the, what is it, a five gig um, account on iCloud, you probably don't want them backing up all their projects and things they create. Um, maybe you don't want them to install apps. You can uncheck and check and um, allow them to use YouTube, not use YouTube. Every single environment is gonna be a little bit different. Um, the thing that I'm most excited about is these last ones. So when we go campus wide next year, I can go in through here and put in, you have to be on this network for your, you to work and no other ones. Or for the superintendent's iPad or treasurer's, here's the VPN information. So that way all they have to do is click a button and they're there. Um, there are a couple other things like LDAP and Cal. If you have um, a CalDAV server set up for your contacts or your calendar, you could set that up as well. Um, for now, we're not, we'll just do a passcode. Um, Allow a simple value, blah, blah, blah. Sounds good. Maximum number to fail the tens. Okay. Um, it has one error. Oh, no. Oh, there it is. Um, display name of this profile. Oh, you have to name the profile, so we'll call this base profile. Um, you can install multiple profiles on a device. Um, so in my head, my workflow is looking like I'm going to have a Meraki. Um, which is what we use right now for management. I'm going to have a Meraki profile, and then I'm going to have a district profile, and then there's probably going to be a classroom profile. Um, that's just how I'm thinking in my head. None of this has really been put out there. Right now we're just using Meraki for our management, um, but right now I'm looking at that layered approach where I can do, okay, this is the base settings. This is the you know classroom settings and so on. Um, and we'll hit save. Okay, so we have our first profile in there. Um, here's the cool part for the configurator is, no, not the spinning wheel of death, uh, but the apps section. So with the apps, what it allows you to do, you can see here I have two apps. I'll actually get rid of those so I can walk you through everything. Uh, delete app. 
and delete. So if you see this little plus and minus here on the bottom, you can simply click on that. And then what it's going to do is going to search. You're going to go to um, the location of where your applications are downloaded. Um, so if you're not a techie person, um, it'll be under your user profile. So your name, then music, then iTunes, then iTunes music. And you're wondering, okay, why would it be under music? It's just how iTunes saves it. And then you can click on this mobile applications. So you can see that I have two apps here. I'm going to go ahead and click open. It's importing them. Now it's going to come up and yell at me. It says, hey, there's a paid app here. We're not allowed to put one app on 30 devices. You need to put the redemption codes here. So we hit OK. So you can see how we have this error message right here. And there's this little zero. So this is the number of VPP codes that you've purchased. So if you click on this, it'll allow you to import your redemption codes that you got from the VPP program. And wherever you save them on your computer, then you'll be able to import them and it'll count down. And as the app is installed on the device, it automatically uses one of the codes. Um, so that might be a different tutorial, um, but for now, this is where it would be. And you'll see where all your different codes and your device names and all that information will show up right here. So we click done. Make sure all that's good, okay. So now I'm going to plug in my device. Just picked up this iPad 3 last night, so bear with me. So here we could create different groups. So let's say you have a group for the, I'm thinking building level. You have a group of them for the iPad or for the library. You have one in your fifth grade, one in your sixth grade. You can create different groups here. Um, so that way different groups will get different settings. They'll get different profiles and apps and things like that. Excuse me. So you can see, maybe you guys can watch this again. I'll unplug the iPad. Watch where it says prepare up here. So I plug in this device. It comes up, and I get a little number one here. I hit prepare. So actually, I'm going to run and grab another iPad to see how this will work with multiple ones. So one second. Okay, so now you can see where the number two has shown up. So I'm going to click prepare. And this guy, are you sure you want to apply these settings to all USB connected devices? So you can see here that I have the two iPads showing up over here. And it's saying, are you sure you want to put this on here? So we're going to go ahead and hit apply. So we're back. It took about, I'd say, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, it had to download the newest version of the iOS and install the clean version of the iOS on the devices. So that's important to know. Um, it, it's best to start with this and then build everything through here. So um, let's say beginning of the year, you want to wipe everything off of the iPads from before, or maybe once a quarter. It really depends on your environment. Um, when you pull it in here, it did install a clean um, version of the iOS. Um, and another thing I didn't talk about in the beginning part was in this prepare, um, this you can number sequentially. So you can say um, fifth grade iPad number one, fifth grade iPad number two, and so on and so forth. So that's what this name does. I didn't number sequentially. So if you look at my devices now, they're both named iPad three. Um, I just wasn't thinking as I was going through. So if you want to number them all the same, don't do don't check this button. If you do want to have them go sequentially, well, then you could just check here. So if I look in supervised now, I have um, under all devices, I have two iPads. So also under they're still connected. So they're also under USB connected. What I did here was I just did group one and group two just to simulate. Um, and you do this by clicking the plus button and then typing it in. And then when you go to all devices, you can drag it into a group. So then you could see where 
there's a device in each group and you can come here and say well group one this is going to be fifth grade so it gets this profile so you can create a new profile blah 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 just like we did in the first step um, but when you click on these devices this is how you're going to manage them so once they're all plugged back into the cart you can come here and say check for update oh, it finds the new update okay go ahead and push it out so the next the last part that I want to talk about is assigning devices um, so I click on this assign button so let's say my special ed director or superintendent whatever are getting their devices so I created a group here called administrators so I'll actually create another one here oops go back to school so teachers and then I'm gonna add a teacher here so we'll call it test teacher and then here I can add um, different documents so let's say I want to do our handbook I want to do a getting started guide I want to welcome to your iPad um, tutorial I can add those devices here I can add those documents here so that way it shows up on um, their device when they get it and once I created my user and I set up all my settings I hit checkout and it says hey which one do you want to give well I only want to give um, everything in group one two or USB connected so which devices are connected via USB if you're just setting up that one um, so we'll just say group number one and we'll hit checkout checking activation checking pairing installing that configuration that we had said earlier so when we look at our device now um, remember how we set a passcode on the device or that was one of our requirements well, if you look at our iPad now, so if you see on our iPad now, it says that we have to set a passcode because that's one of the restrictions that we put. So we'll go ahead and hit continue and we can put it in our new, enter four or more characters and continue. So you could see where the profile has taken place on the actual device itself. Let me turn this off here. Whoop. Goodbye. Um, so let's say you didn't want YouTube, YouTube wouldn't show up. It just shows that you have put your configuration profile on that device. Um, there's a lot to this application. I, this was just a quick brief overview. Um, I did write a post over at my blog um, where I talk about the um, all the different things you can do with it. And I also link to the help files um, that can kind of walk you through how to um, create profiles and all that stuff and that's at the bottom of the post you can find all that information if you have questions feel free to uh, tweet me at TJ Houston or leave a comment on my blog or email um, I have all my different contact methods listed on tjhouston.com so now once you get to the site here you can see all the different docs at the bottom thanks and have a good one